Hey everyone, welcome back to Fighter Crypto. My name is Chase. Today we're going to look at Bitcoin. There's some big things happening. Uh, we're going to look at the importance of drawing trend lines across multiple time frames and how they can keep you a couple of steps ahead of the rest of the market. Uh, so let's get right to it. Uh, we're going to start off on the one day. We're also going to look at the Gaussian channel. Uh, the five day Gaussian, we don't do that much, but you know, maybe some bigger things happening there. Uh, we're going to check in on that and then, you know, obviously car and quarter of the day towards the end. Uh, we'll let's, let's start off on the daily chart, right? And you might look at this and say, this is quite busy, right? And I agree, but this is for this video, right? You see all these different colored trend lines. Those are for the other time frames that we're going to get to. So on the daily, we're focusing on the yellow straight lines, right? This is a moving average. We're just looking at this and you might say those look oddly drawn and you might be correct on the candlesticks, but I invite you to, if you struggle to draw trend lines properly, a lot of people draw them incorrectly, uh, just take it off candlesticks for a moment and put it on a line chart. And then you just simply draw it from the peaks, right? Uh, you don't want to be drawing through, you know, the peaks or, you know, or the troughs, right? The bottoms. Um, that's what you do, right? Then you can see clearly of where the closes are for, you know, said day. And they can, you can see, you know, right here, why didn't you draw here? Well, you want to have the most touch points. Well, there's one, there's two, three, four, right? That's a pretty good trend line. Uh, this, why did it do that? That might have been, you know, the warning shot for the bear. That's the growl, right? Uh, then the, the bear strikes, right? Not that much later, right? On the daily, right? A couple days later, right? Back on August uh, 9th, we closed outside of that. And then, you know, now, now look at us. Now we're, now we're falling down bigly. Uh, after, you know, yesterday, right? We're, that's why we're making this video today. There's some key things happening and we're going to look at all of that. And we're also going to look at, you know, some of the things happening in the foreign exchange markets that maybe are causing this. So the daily chart, right? There's your daily lines. Uh, you know, put it back on your candles if that's what you're used to. And then that's how you properly draw that trend line. Uh, so when you start to break it, right, with this candle here, that was your warning shot. You close below it. Uh, we came back up, but, you know, looking back, hindsight's always easy to see it, right? It's in the moment of, uh, you're like, yeah, maybe that's not a big, big thing, right? But then we failed to go back to the top uh, with all these up thrusts on all these candles, these doji candles, uh, you know, very concerning. And, you know, last video, I think we talked about that. Um, and now we've closed another one outside of it, two outside of it, and now we're just going down bigly. Are we going to reverse anytime soon? Well, on the daily chart, we could go all the way down here. Uh, you can see all these downtrends, right? You have an uptrend and a downtrend, uptrend, downtrend. But what do you notice is that there's higher lows each time. So we're in another downtrend. So far, uh, we just have to hold this, right? Uh, really, we can go down to, you know, the low of that candle, 22.4. And we're still, you know, could technically, it could be a higher low and this trend could continue. We will reverse this entire uptrend if we break that low. So keep that in mind on the little bit bigger picture on the daily. Now let's zoom in on the four hour, right? So now we can we can kind of erase uh, the the daily, right? We've talked about that. Let's get those out of there just for the video, just for confusion. Now we, we don't need to really focus on the top lines, right? Because now we're concerned with where the support is. We're in a we're falling down now, right? So we don't really have the the top lines kind of irrelevant until we start moving back up. So on this the four hour chart, right? It's just the the fuchsia, the color of the day, fuchsia. Uh, the pink line, right? Uh, <clears throat> and again, if you're if you struggle to draw this correctly, remember, like, go. There's so many people that draw trend lines very poorly. Uh, use just use your line chart. You can draw it very accurately, very quickly, right? You see that there's one touch point, two touch points. That's your first two troughs, your two bottoms, and then that's your your trend doesn't start until you have the two touch points. Uh, there is no tr there is no trend there is no support there is no resistance till you have two touch points plain and simple okay so there's our two right then we draw it now now let's zoom in to where we are now all right let me put this back on auto here there we go all right so that number if we go to it today right that line that needs to hold right without a close on the four hour chart is you know roughly 23 250 right so you can see this changing, you know, time by time. Remember on a line chart, these only update on the closes, closing candles. So that just closed, right? As we're, as we're filming this, uh, three hours, 59 minutes till the next one closes. So this will act like wild, like a wild pivot here, 
right? So let's show you what I mean here. If you're on unfil- so if we close up here, it'll look like that. If we close down here, it'll look like that, right? So this will change, you know, quite wildly with prices. So hopefully that makes sense. Um, so now we're coming down. So our trend line on the four hour really needs to hold about 23, 250, 260, right? Right in there. Um, now you might also see these other trend lines. So we'll get to those. So the shorter time frames, although not as, you know, I want to say important, but they're not as important on the bigger scales. They are important to maybe identify trends early or trend breaks early. And I think you can probably see where I'm going with this. Uh, so the four hour is the pink one and it looks to be, you know, relatively close to our support uh, now. So let's delete uh, the four hour and let's zoom into the one hour, right? So this is where you can get a lot of step ups on the, uh, on the competition, so to speak. So uh, the one hour chart, right? Remember our line chart, very easy to draw this, right? Let's take it off the chart real quick. Look at the candles, right? It might look obtuse strange uh if you're keep it on candles but you you can switch it back if that's what you like remember but you're drawing from the the very bottoms here uh with as many touch points as possible right so if you were to draw it to there and then you'd have to reconnect it here right well we came back down that's three touch points how many more do we got well let's put remember to put back on auto there's four there's five and almost a near perfect rejection we broke it back test and rejection almost immediately on the hourly chart, right? We broke that uh, with four touch points, right? Five touch points, really. Um, so uh, a trend line, you know, any time frame has a bunch of touch points, like three, four, five, right? Those are be bigger ones to break on that time frame, not necessarily big on any other time frame. That's why we're doing this with color coded lines. So what else do we see? So we broke that trend line. Um, and now what? Well, look at this other one, right? Why would you draw a second trend line like this? Well, you, you could either draw it, you know, this other way, right? You could draw it this way, but that is pretty quickly invalidated, right? So you can draw that. That's fine. If you want to draw more, this is called an accelerated uptrend, right? And that looks more bullish, except for when you break it, right? Then you can either leave it there or delete it, right? I had it up there when we were doing this. Uh, but now this is called decelerating uh, downtrend uh, or uptrend, right? You're you're still in an uptrend, but it's showing signs of slowing down because look at the angle of the attack here, right? So a trend that's going like this uh, is you know very bullish. If it accelerates further, right, it's even more bullish, right? Think of a bull market, how it like peaks out at the end. Now the opposite is true when you start to you know have these descending. Uh, angles of attack here and you what you see about that one uh we're slowing down uh the past you know several since since early august right we're slowing down so here's our next trend that we need to be holding and it's if you remember on the four hour chart it's right at the same level right 23 260 so that will be a pivotal moment on the one hour and the four hour chart if we lose that and you see this blue line because that's the closing price if you see that below here, uh, another bear swipe, right? Another bear paw coming at your face. So let's put it back on candles, get back to the normal. And now you can see. So remember that when you're drawing uh, these trend lines, you can draw from, from uh, you know, bottom to bottom to bottom, right? That would be the next one. And that, that would look like it's increasing uh, in, you know, in bullishness, which it was at that time. And that got invalidated, you know, right around in here, right? If you draw that line. Uh, so then now you're focusing on, you know, the main trend line here. And then if you continue to hold that, right, you can still draw it from the bottoms. That's fine. But then when you start to break that, you need to look for your previous two local bottoms. Uh, and that's showing that the trend is slowing. So the trend is slowing for sure on the hourly chart as far as the bulls. Uh, and the bulls will, you know, again get start to get slaughtered by the bears if we start to break this line because then we're breaking down even further uh, and now we're starting to look at downtrends right so we're trying to roll over if we break this on the hourly chart the odds are going up that you know the bears are coming out to play in a little bit of a bigger way so let's uh for those of you still with me hopefully we're recording uh let's zoom out to the biggest not say the biggest but the the most biggest 
that we tend to look at the weekly chart and where are we here right this is the 200 week in the orange uh we've lost that as support we've reclaimed it relatively quickly right this is the first time ever we've been you know multiple candle weekly closes under here so yeah this time is different you could say the old cliche but you know what did we do last week we talked about this in the last video too we closed above the ema8 that's a big thing we hadn't closed above the ema8 since march our, our rally to 48k remember that uh and that was short-lived and now look where we are again we did it uh, you know months later and we're seemingly struggling again to show some follow-through to the upside right our next logical really resistance point on ta is around 28k which on the daily chart you know flipping over back over to the daily really quick if you didn't see my last video right that's the 30 day long consolidation around that 28 25 level right so that's our next logical place on the weekly chart since breaking through the ma8 but so far we're struggling to do that we're even struggling to hold the ma8 as support that that number is 23555 right now as of recording um that will change throughout the week uh, but if we fail to close above that this week at week's end four days eight hours the odds were increase of us either going sideways more for the next couple of weeks or uh you know going down to our 23k level which is not that far right 23.5 to 23k these are kind of a double kind of net right here so we broke through it initially but are we going to fall right back down uh, that remains to be seen, but uh, important weekly close. If we close under the 200 week, let me be vividly clear here. If we close under the 200 week, 23K, if we close under that, the odds are going astronomically higher of us going to not only test these lows here, but potentially making new lows. Why? Because this was this would just be a fake out just like this, right? When you fail to follow through with your rally that's showing extreme weakness in the market right this so far has just been a relief rally uh in order to continue we need to be holding uh massive moving averages that we just reclaimed okay so this will be huge come four days eight hours from now if we're under here we're in deep shit <laughs> If we're above here, we're still okay. Doesn't mean you can't go to the deep shit, but uh, you we're at least okay for the for the time being, right? If we are under here, if we are anywhere under the 200 week, right? And if you want to know where the close is, did we close under there or not, Chase? Right? Easy way to tell. You guessed it. The line chart, right? If you see any blue sticking under that orange line, on on you know the week close it's it's good night right we're going down minimum you know minimum i would say 10 percent, and if if not you know 15 you know relatively quickly right do you remember this do you remember this whole chestnut <laughs> chestnut um <laughs> uh this this whole thing right does this just very bigly stuff going on now speaking of that what else is going on what caused this crap this morning was it just you know the bulls giving up no right let's go look we, we highlighted this yesterday on twitter uh forex factory right tracks all the currencies around the world uh the dxy if you're familiar with that the dxy is going up today because right good news out of the us dollar 8 30 a.m right i tried to tell you this yesterday there'd probably be increased volatility today so last month 0.9 percent increase which was why is it red well it they expected higher and it was lower but this month they expected Right, or past month right it, it, it's a lagging right so it, this was this was for july uh they expected you know negative 0.1 percent core retail sales right this is a big thing um and we actually got a 0.4 percent positive that's a half of a percentage point which doesn't sound maybe i sound like much it's big right because they expected not only you know 0.1 negative 0.1 right so um they expected a huge swing downwards they didn't get that much of a swing downwards, right? Much better than expected. So that causes the U.S. dollar to go up, right? So, and the retail sales kind of fell flat, uh, but core retail sales, this is a big one. And the DXY pumped after that. Um, and here we are, right? If the DXY shoots up, um, crypto tends to suck. Okay, so is that it, Chase? Are we good now? No, no, 
right? There's another event happening, right? Two o'clock, right here. This this could be very bigly again. Uh, watch out, 2, 2 p.m. These are Eastern times. So depending on when you watch this video, it might have already happened. So if you see some crazy stuff happening, you're like, uh, I'm watching this video, Chase, and the price isn't even close to what you're talking about here. Um, it's either way up or way down. Uh, it likely has something to do with this news. So 2 p.m., expect some crazy shenanigans. Okay, so that's that's that. Uh, pay attention to this. Uh, I try to update you on this. Uh, my Telegram group, I try to keep them updated on all this stuff. Daily stuff and still in Telegram. So, all right, uh, quarter of the day. It's the friends you can call at 4 a.m. that matter. <laughs> so I saw this today. My quote, I do my quotes every day, right? Um, <laughs> I'm screwed. <laughs> Uh, there's no one I'm how many people you got you can do this to and be like okay what do you need man <laughs> zero all right um <laughs> click no hit no we don't even answer <laughs> what else we got car of the day uh <laughs> uh the Bugatti EB 110 it was funny um uh, what's what's one thing that's you know this is one of the first Bugatti Bugattis that you know modern Bugattis uh pretty cool looking uh this person's kind of updated the headlights a bit and the wheels a little bit newer most of them look you know pretty dated but you know what's the one thing you know if you're bugatti owner and you own one of these what's the one thing that would be better than that uh two <laughs> the same damn color uh pretty cool and you can see the dated on the, the wheels look a little bit out of date and there you can see the the brighter headlights there but still million dollar plus cars if you can lucky to get one no one's selling them but bugatti eb 110 the first kind of modern day supercar uh, my opinion, that's, you know, it's over 20, 25 years old. So I can't imagine seeing that back in the, the 90s rolling around. I've never seen, I don't think I've ever seen one in real life. Uh, but that's that. I've seen a uh, real Bugatti, like the more modern ones, like the these guys back here. Um, the the I haven't seen a Devo, but I've seen the Chiron. Those are impressive too in real life. Um, all right, I'm done rambling. Uh, time to pay attention to Bitcoin price. Oh, oh, if you're still here. <laughs> Uh, we forgot to do the Gaussian channel, but I'm going to do it right now. So let's look at the five-day Gaussian channel because that's what we do. Um, occasionally, for those of you who watch to the end, I'll throw in some bonuses. So um, here we go. Five-day Gaussian. What do we got going on? Well, we're way the hell under it still, so not a huge issue. But more importantly, look what's happening here, right? Uh, those, those, those are the reason I'm showing you this, okay? Uh, look at the, the slightly ascending following the EMA 8 on the 5 day, right? Uh, we're approaching the 21, right? See this? Just look at this pattern, right? And let's go back and look at the last bear market, right? Let's go back in history and check it out. Um, does it look oddly similar to you? So far, um, almost a mirror, right? Uh, maybe we're right in this area, right? So I'm not saying this is coming, but... There's a greater than 0% chance it's coming, right? So here, look at look at this. Fall down under the 200, under the 8, tra start tracking the EMA 8, right between, right under the 21, you start getting the squeeze play here, right? Look at this. Now, this is weeks, right? This isn't around the corner. Um, you know, anything can happen, right? But, I mean, just look at this. <laughs> It's pretty pretty crazy that it's like deadly similar, right? We're under almost the same amount under the Gaussian channel. We're right at the EMA 8, squeezing through the 21 EMA, and then, you know, kaboom. Um, so, let's go back to modern day. <laughs> if we're ever going to get there, right? Look at the similarities, right? Not exactly, but very similar. Uh, not repeating, but rhyming. Right, fall down under the 200, under the MA8, rise back up, track the MA8, getting potentially squeezed here. So maybe, you know, within a month from now, right, these are almost weekly, it's five days, right? You could see these lines converging, right? Something very similar here. Uh, so let's just see if we keep tracking it, right? Maybe we do this and then we start to build up going into Q4 or something like that, right? Uh, certainly worth paying attention to. Um, you know, nothing has to repeat, but, you know, history doesn't always repeat, but it does often rhyme. So something to note that, you know, not many people are noting. Um, <laughs> there you go. So uh, but let's let's summarize um, what the 5-Day Gaussian channel tells us if you're new. 
hopefully I, I doubt zero people are new watching this long but but um if you are let me know so the five day gossing channel once we get our prices back above it right which is still some time away um Price back above it. Wait till the channel turns green on the five day, not the daily, not the hour, not the two minute, not the two month. The five day gossing channel is the secret sauce. Once you are above it, the channel turns green. It's go time, right? Doesn't always, you know, account for black swan events. Uh, but in history, you know, I mean, going back on the DXY or on the um, the, the long, the BLX, excuse me, the BLX, right? The, the, this guy uh, going back on the BLX. And history on the five day. Once you turn green after you're red on the five day, it's go time, right? So don't flub it away. <laughs> don't once uh, once we get there, right? And we'll be tracking it every step of the way. But uh, you could potentially see, you know, if we were even, you know, rhyme with, uh, you know, the 2018 bear market. We're still looking probably well into 2023 um we're looking like maybe spring to summertime right when the kiddos are out of school again uh we're probably looking you know in here as far as to overtake you know price action on top of the gaussian turn green and then you know go time uh the earliest i could really see that happening is you know right in here uh q1 q2 late q1 early q2 that's the earliest really based on based on based <laughs> All right, so I just wanted to summarize that. We haven't looked at it in a while. I probably could have made a separate video on that to not bore you to death, but uh, 20 minutes for the four of you who made it this far, 57 gold stars. Um, if you have any questions, want anything else covered, um, I don't care. No, I'm just going <laughs> to... No, let me know. Uh, bear markets are slow. I get no subscribers new ever. Boo-hoo. Cry me a river. Who cares? Um, just trying to help the four of you that track me and... Uh, relatively like putting up with my shit <laughs> all right uh that's uh bitcoin in a nutshell watch out for 2 p.m today uh we got about an hour and a half there's gonna be some craziness going on i have a feeling we'll see if the fed pivots if they do the dxy can start dropping and we could still keep rocking um otherwise right this is the daily gaussian channel we're still red but we're on the verge of turning green but the daily less meaning but you know, if we start getting up to 25K, um, I would expect a continuation up to kind of around 28K. Uh, we'll see how we go. Keep in mind, the 100-day moving average is at 26K now. Could pose a little bit of a problem because you got point A right here. And then you got that low wick on the initial drop here. So might be a little bit of a resistance at that point, 26K, if we push up, right? The only way we're pushing up higher at this point, really... Um, we need to bounce today right off of this key moving average, maintain this uptrend of higher lows, higher highs. Uh, we're still okay on the, you know, the daily and the weekly chart, but the, the lower time frames are starting to, you know, stutter step a little bit. But, you know, time will tell. I would say in the next, <laughs> sometime today, we we'll probably have a good idea of where we're going for the next, um, you know, several days to weeks, right? If we comes out news today, at, you know, a couple hours. And you see us falling, that's probably the direction we're going to continue for the next couple of weeks. However, if the Fed, you know, pivots and changes their mind and, you know, you know, bad news for the dollar and, you know, we're doing going back to easing a little bit, um, then, hey, we could continue up. So don't be surprised either way. Don't don't be the 99 percent that are clueless about anything that goes on in the world. Um, all right. I'll do my best to keep you updated. Hopefully you found this somewhat helpful at some point in time during this long video. All right. I'll see you on the next one. Let me know if you watched this long or did you fast forward? You just fast forwarded it just to see the end. If I had any stupid dad jokes, I don't have any this time. Or do I <laughs> still watch? You still here? Ferris Bueller. Um, I can't think of anything else off the top of my head. I suck it off the top. Um, I got nothing. Um, what's your favorite movie? <laughs> Nobody's watching this.